Hello, today I'm going to install Debian testing. The uh, website for Debian, it gives uh, various options. You could install Debian testing directly from a launch, from an installation disk. But what they uh, want you to do, uh, they say right here the most reliable way of, to install testing from scratch is to do a minimal installation with a stable installer then upgrade from stable to testing so we'll start with the uh, Debian uh, stable in this demonstration I'm going to use VirtualBox um, about the only difference in the installation is that the uh, hardware will be supported um, in certain situations, especially with Realtek, um, Realtek wireless devices, sometimes there's some problems with Debian. Debian will sometimes not have drivers or firmware that's supposed to be in the kernel for some reason. So I've read that some people say that Debian removes all non-free or proprietary stuff. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's not there sometimes. But back to this. And I may have said earlier there's non-free installation disks, which have the drivers that you might need, especially if you have uh, Realtek wireless devices. Um, and uh, if you use the standard installer you're going and you have a real tip device that will ask you somewhere during the installation to uh, supply the firmware if it's not magically in there already so we'll start this and you could do a graphical install with your mouse or you could do the uh, regular install I guess I'll do graphical this time. It's a little slower for it to load everything. So I usually use the other installer. But since uh, this is more of a, a tutorial, I'll use the easy way. So English, United States, that's where I am. American English. And then we have to let it load various stuff. Okay, Debian. That's good enough. Host name is the name of the computer to uh, the network, and I don't have a domain name, so we can skip that. And then I need to put a root password. This is the password for installing programs and updating the system. say uber door full name for the new user and that's the username for the account that's how if you use samba smb or ssh the secure shell then you'll this will be more important but if you're just using it for uh, home use then um, whatever Okay, the password for your account, in this case, my account, Uberdorf. I'll put in a password for that too. And the difference between the two is basically the root password is the administrative password, and this is my standard user account. And there's a difference between the two because it's safer if you visit uh, if you accidentally install something or somebody else installs something on your computer they can't do it without the root password even if they know you're even if you're logged in okay I'm in the central time zone And we'll 
will use the entire disk. If you want it encrypted, then you would select this option. That way if somebody steals your hard drive, then they can't see what's on it without the password. Uh, we'll just go the easy way. That's the hard disk. Now, um, if you're going to dual boot, then there will be more options than this. Um, if you're just going to write over the entire disk, uh, everything that's in it, then you would just select uh, Erase Disk and Install Debian. This is if you want more security and have to log in or use the password to log into different folders. Um, this is good enough where what the default is. So this is how it's going. It's just telling you how it's going to be split up. It's going to do a swap space just in case you run out of RAM. And then this is going to be the primary partition. And it's asking you to make sure that this is what you want to do. So finish partitioning and write changes to disk. And then it's asking you again. Because if you mess up and have information on your hard drive that you don't want to lose, then this is your last chance to save it. And now it's installing from the disk. At this point, it's a little, it's not that slow, but it is going to take a minute or two. Once, then it's going to give the option of which desktop environment and options I want to install, and that's going to be later. And once again, this is the net install disk where it just installs the base system. And then you could choose to uh, download the rest off the internet. And if you, there's also an op options to install a disk or to download a disk with the full desktop environment that you want. I usually use the net install to go a distro hop, a desktop environment hop, if that's even a term. I just try GNOME for a while, I'll try KDE, see what's going on. And it's almost done. There. And I don't have another disk that I want to scan, so no. Now it wants to set up the mirror. Now that last screen was uh, if you have a proxy that you use. If you don't know what that is, then you probably don't have one. And just leave it blank if you don't have a proxy. Okay, this is them asking if they can see what programs you want to install. That's explains in here why uh, I usually don't but uh, if you want to send the information to them you can and this is where you can install the information you want if you're going to do a server then you don't need the desktop environment if you're going to uh, but you might need to have a secure shell set up. If you want internet site web server then that's what you would click but in this case we're just going to install GNOME. You also have the option of uh, LXD, Mate, uh, Cinnamon, KDE, XFC as you can see. And now it's going to download almost 1500 files. It's going to take a while, so I'll pause this here for now. Okay, so I'm back. I've uh, switched the uh, virtual machine to full screen mode. That's why it looks different. 
and it's almost done. It's the only. This is saying it's the only operating system on the computer. It should be safe to install a grub, blah, 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 blah. So basically, it's the only issue is if uh, there is another operating system that's present and it doesn't recognize it, then you might want to. Uh, well, basically, it's saying you'll have to uh, manually configure it later to boot it. That's only a what if. In most, most of the cases, yeah, this is fine, especially if it's not a dual boot. And then we'll select that, have it enter it automatically. Okay, and the installation is complete. F of Debian stretch basically and uh, to get to Debian testing will be a later step but if you just want Debian stable then this is as far as you need to go okay so we have our uh, login screen if you want to use different versions of GNOME not different version numbers, but if you want classic menu or if you just want regular GNOME or whatever, then you select the setting icon and then log in. Okay, I'm back again. I just adjusted the uh, display so I could see all the screen. And what we're going to do is go into the terminal. And turn this is no, so it's easier to just do a search at the top then to try to figure out where it is. And here's our terminal. If we're just using regular GNOME, then it'd be time to do a oh, we don't. This is no, Debian. Okay, so now we're in the uh, root so that we can do an APT update. Make sure everything's up to date. And everything's up to date. So next we have to, and pretty much you'd be done if this is the. Uh, if this is uh, stable that you're looking for, but since we're going for testing in this one, we're going to do a search for Debian testing upgrade. And then we're going to look for the Debian wiki, which is the first result in this one. Uh, make sure it's the Debian wiki. So we'll scroll down. How to upgrade. Upgrade from current stable, which is what we're doing right now, as of April 2019. So we want to edit this list right here. So we need to get back into this and use nano as the uh, terminal writer and then the path and file that we need to adjust and this is the sources list so remove or comment out okay so We've got the sources list, and we need to change stable to testing, wherever we see it. Now 
Now one of these we're going to block out, but I'm doing this numerically. Okay, so everything's up to testing. And let's make see the whole thing. And now we're going to remove or common out stable security update lines. Anything with security dot debian dot org unit. There it is. So this is the one that we're gonna block out. So all you have to do is put a number sign there in a space. I put a space to make it easier to read. And that's commented out. Or you could just delete it. Comment out any other stable specific lines like backports or updates. Okay, step three is done. Verify that it's not fixed to specific release. Okay, and then out down here it's reminding you to have the security updates. So, this right here, it seems kind of weird that they're doing it this way, the instructions, but make sure this is done that. Make sure the address is the same. Get rid of that part. because it's saying over here that wants Debian secu security .debian org, which is up here but it wants oh I made a mistake there I just knew something was off okay we're getting rid of the Debian security part which it applies to uh, the stable. Oh no. It's just confusing the way that they write it. Sometimes it's probably easy for makes sense to some people, but I always get it wrong. Maybe this will be the first time I get it right. I've done this several times. Okay, so security Debian org testing slash updates main and something I usually do is I add well we'll do that another step okay so this is done so control X to exit press Y for yes override it there, now we can look at step three. Or, or step four, sorry. Step four. It's not letting me select it. Okay, verify that your installation is not fixed to a specific release in that place. So we'll check that. We'll change directory to. Or now we'll just do nano. Cedra apt apt dot configuration dot directory zero, zero default or would have been easier just to copy and paste but I've got mostly there 
Um, did I spell it right? Yeah, looks like it's empty. So just to make sure, I'm going to change directory into that location, that area. Just make double sure. And list zero zero. Yep, no default release. Okay. So, get back to the home directory. And now we want update. Look for errors. No errors so far. Because if you mess up the sources.list, then it's going to give you an error here. Okay, I think I'll keep this part in here. I did get an error from the update, but it's uh, and so we'll work through this error here. So nano, we'll go to the file. Uh, actually, let's see here. I googled the. Uh, error see if it's out there there it is 50 upstream so nano 50 upstream let's scroll down to the bottom and that looks like the uh, error that I was getting. So we'll comment out this stuff temporarily. Okay, that was the solution. I don't know why it did that, but um, removing the package upstream for some people fixes a problem, but like he says, it removes packages you might not want to get rid of. So we'll go into PT upgrade now. going to upgrade to testing and it's going to take a little while okay so it's finally got into the place where it wants to um, ins install a new uh, version of the configuration file that uh, gave us problems earlier and so we want Yes. Oh, maybe I need to select this. What did that happen? Oh well. I'm going to type yes. And I'll update the, the app stream program that gives problems and shouldn't give us any more problems in the future. Okay, so it's finished upgrading. And so I did another APT update. To uh, see if uh, make sure everything got upgraded. Not everything got upgraded, and there's um, some packages that need to be auto removed, but it should be usable at this point. And to uh, upgrade the stuff that didn't get upgraded, that's LibreOffice, that's uh, the GNOME Display Manager, X Server. That stuff that they didn't want to uh, automatically upgrade without um, your uh, explicit uh, doing, you might say. So we'll just exit. The, that's to exit root. Now we're back into the regular profile. And we will 
turn this off and start back up. The uh, basically what's going on, I think, is that it's X server is having a problem because it didn't get upgraded in the upgrade. So it won't let me log into these profiles. Normally, what I would do is to press Control Alt F3. But that so we'll go into this. I'm going to select Wayland to test that hypothesis. And that's what's going on. So we'll boot into Wayland, but not X server. Okay, so we're going to do what I should have done earlier. That was a mistake. I should have updated uh, X server with a distribution upgrade, which I haven't had to do before. Oops. So we'll do apt update again. And apt dist upgrade. And now it's going to fix this. It'll take a little bit longer though. I've uh, finished the distribution upgrade. I've uh, it's back in GNOME. It's Debian 10 now. Debian testing, uh, the current testing as of April 2019. And I rebooted just to make sure that it'll work this time. And that there's no other problems. So, this is it. Everything's working. And. Debian testing. Thank you for watching. Bye.